Next we have Jim Grinnell. Oh boy, what a crowd. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Some of you remember that I was elected uh, two years ago and uh, served on the board until uh, I was out with uh, Jerry Nielsen up in uh, Columbia and uh, we were out uh, looking for a site for a solar facility. And um, Jerry, he's got, we were in his pickup truck and Jerry said, well, the trees have grown over and so uh, uh, how about you guys uh, holding the brush back, you know? So I'm on the driver's side holding the brush back and the cab goes by and twang and my foot slides right underneath the left rear wheel and uh, I crushed the uh, little bone and uh, I, I couldn't take a shower for a month and I felt that I was duty bound to resign. And, but now I can walk and I, I'm back and I appreciate uh, uh, being here. I. I was lucky enough to uh, receive the highest number of votes in uh, uh, two years ago, and I hope I can do that again. I would like to say that um, I was a farmer once. I had a little cattle ranch, and uh, my great-grandfather great -great -grandfather was a uh, peach farmer down in uh, Tulare. He married a girl from Tuolumne. Uh, they got married in 1857 down there at uh, what's now the Kistler Ranch. It used to be called uh, Cloudman's Ranch. Um, I think I have the, a good background. Not only was I on the board for a while, I've got a bachelor's degree in um, engineering, a master's degree in industrial administration. That's like an MBA for engineers. A master's in health administration. I worked um, uh, towards a doctorate in finance. Um, I'm a veteran. I was a public utility inspection engineer, a management consultant. Um, I've done quite a bit in volunteering. Uh, the chair of the Housing and Transportation Committee for Area 12, Agency on Aging. A uh, member of the Tuolumne County Commission on Aging at one time. I co-founded the Senior Fair. Um, I'm a mem member of the Veteran and Family uh, Advisory Council for, Area, for VA Palo Alto. Um, and I'm an amateur radio licensed volunteer. I'm an easygoing guy. I'm cheerful. I try to get along with everybody. Um, as far as uh, TUD goes, I would like to just have you look and consider for a minute. This is the um, financial statement from the Finance Committee for, from Tuesday, September 16th, just last week. And if you look at the financial statement, Cash and, and investments unrestricted. Water, zero. This means the water fund has zero money. The sewer fund is $122,000 overdrawn. The problem is that the budget hasn't been balanced and live within the, ba within the a balanced budget. In other words, we spend and if the revenue doesn't come in, we just keep spending. And we just can't do that. The absolute, in my estimation, the most critical thing for us to do in the next year or so is to find a great general manager with a lot of finance background. And it isn't going to be easy. We have a general manager right now with, with lots of engineering experience. We need a general manager with lots of finance experience. And I hope we can find that person locally. Whether we can or not, I don't know. But it is, as we brought out earlier, it's the general manager's responsibility through the water code okay, to run the district. And we need the right person, and I hope to be able to find and vet the right person. I think that's really critical. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jim. And we'll open up for questions. Guess not. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> At almost every board meeting that you attended as a director, 
you kept talking about you wanted to hire your own local council and have them attend every meeting. Right. And this board, I believe, has incurred more legal costs than any board in the past few years. So I would like to know if that is something you continue to support. I'll just say this. If, if we had hired a local council that had been at the meetings like I was proposing, I couldn't find three votes, okay? But if I could have had done that, we wouldn't have had those Brown Act violations, okay? Because we would have had council sitting at the table, you know? And this is another thing I'd like to show you that if just look, look at the, you can see the lines, okay? I was really concerned about budget and finance. And here's the rates back from eight, 1984, okay? $10, $20. This is the uh, projected 2009 budget. This is the problem. We can't just keep putting the money out on the rate payers. Excuse me. Jim, same question I asked uh, one of the prior candidates. The poll in the Union Democrat gave four solutions to future water needs. Conservation, raising Lions Dam, acquiring additional water, seeking water rights. Now that poll also assumed that you had to raise rates to acquire additional water. Forget that part. Of those four options, what's your preference? And what roughly, what roughly cost would you associate with each one of those four? Or what cost would well, you associate I, with your preference? I'll say this, and I haven't, I haven't done the legal research on this, but I read recently that um, the Bureau of Reclamation lost a, a suit. And I have read the, the original Tuolumne County settlement, okay, when, when before New Baloney's was, was all put together, okay. Tuolumne County is entitled in that to 75,000 acre feet of senior water rights, senior above OID and MID. And I think it, it takes a while. That's one of the routes that I think we should really seriously pursue. Well, okay, but you know, it's like when one of the other precincts said, you know, cooperation, partnership, you work it out. Anybody else? Oh. I've attended uh, meetings while you were sitting on the board. And if I recall correctly, we spent about an hour and a half one day discussing one individual budget item that you weren't happy with. And um, I found that the board was basically paralyzed. There could be no decisions made. Um, discussions were not taking place on the board. The public wasn't being listened to. I don't understand why you think that you need to micromanage the budgets as a board member. Well, fiscal responsibility is, is one of the uh, duties of a board member, okay? What, what I think needs to happen is that you need to do like the city does, and they have, they go over to the fire station and they have workshops, okay? And a lot of these questions need to be worked out before you get that. Workshops are open to the public. Not that they, you eliminate the public, okay? But you just can't make all your decisions. And, you, and, you know, when people get together, it, you, you, you got to talk. But you can't just put two people on a committee and then expect them to educate the other people. The committees can't make all the decisions. Anyway, I've enjoyed my time uh, on the board, and I hope to be able to, to participate again. And uh, I'd like to mention to uh, Tom, thank you for your service. All right, Jim, thank you very much. Next, we have Michael Cummings. <laughs>